Hi, and welcome to another tutorial for Affinity Publisher. Um, I'd like to show you today how you can use the newer data merge feature that came out in 2021 with Publisher uh, to create a prompt journal easily. Um, now, if you've ever worked with mail merge in any of the Microsoft products, you might be a little intimidated by the idea of data merge, but I want to start with this prompt journal because it's a really easy way to dip your toes into the idea of data merge. So let's get started without any further fluff. Uh, so the first thing I want to do, I'm in publisher is just set up uh, a new document. So file new, for simplicity's sake, we're just going to create a eight and a half by 11 size piece of paper um, just for the purposes of this demonstration. You might want to set it up as uh, more of a journal size, like a six by nine or seven by 10, um, but we're just going to keep it simple because the focus on this is how to create the data merge. I am, however, going to create a master page. So let's go to the pages window and under master pages, I'm just going to create a new master. And on this, I'm going to put any elements that I want to repeat on my pages. So since this is a journal, I'll need some lines. So I'll go to the pen tool to line mode, and we'll just drop a point here. I'm going to hold shift to keep my line straight and just drop a point over here and we will make this just a little thicker maybe 0.6 points or so and then once i have this line i'm going to select it Control or command j to duplicate it and then i'm just going to go into this y box click behind the um, position so i'm in the transform window here click in the y position which is our vertical and right behind where it has my position, I'm going to add plus 0 0.30. So that's how far I want my lines to be apart. And enter. And that moved my duplicated line down. Now I can control J or command J on a Mac repeatedly to move further lines down the page. That looks good. So I'm just going to grab over all of these and let's just make sure they're perfectly centered. So up to the alignment tab and I'm going to align horizontally to the margin and then click apply and now they're perfectly centered. Now let's just add a little bit of decoration to this. I'm going to go over to the stock where it just connects directly with um, Pixabay. If you don't have that up, you can go to view and studio and just make sure you've got a check next to the word stock. So I put in uh, something for flourish and I had one here a little while ago and it's probably disappeared now. Let's see. I had one that worked really nicely and now it's gone. Nope, oh, here it is. So I'm just going to take this, drag it into my document, and we will just kind of resize it. This is just going to be my background, so I don't care if I just stretch it out just a little bit like this. All right, so now we're done with the stock. We'll put that back, and let's go to the Layers tab. And our image is now on top of all of our lines. So up in this area here, we'll just click on Move to Back and it sends it to the back of the layers and now it's behind all of my lines. Now obviously it's really hard to see my lines right now and this would take a lot of ink to print so let's go with this image layer still selected to opacity and we'll just turn this way down so that it's just a faint background image here. Okay so that is my master all set up now let's go to the pages window and in the pages section I'm going to click on page one and right click on it and apply master. I want to do master A on all my pages and just say OK. So that applies it to this page. Alright so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get my prompts ready. 
Now there's a few different file formats you can use for this. Um, Excel is probably the most common of all of them, but I believe you can also use CSV and then some other things like JSON, which I, I don't even want to go there. So we're just going to keep it simple and just do an Excel spreadsheet. So I opened a new spreadsheet and because this is just a prompt journal, I really only need one piece of data and that is my prompts. So on the first line, I'm going to put the title of this column, which is prompt. And then my subsequent lines under that are my little different prompts here. So I just typed a few off the top of my head. Um, we could just add, is your favorite uh, color and how does it make you feel? Actually, how about your favorite song? And how does it make you feel? Okay, so we've got all our prompts. And then I'm just going to save that. And I've just saved it to my downloads just to make it easy for me to find. So now we've got our file set up. So that's super easy. Just write the word prompt or whatever you want your field to be called. Um, and then put your different prompts in a list underneath that column and save it. That's all you need to do. So we'll get rid of that. So let's go ahead and put our prompt here. So I'm going to grab the frame text tool and we will create a text box here. And I'm just going to um, center my text both horizontally over here and vertically right next door to that. And then I'll also want to just change my um, font style, but let's just type a little something here just so we've got something to help us design our prompt area. So I'm just going to switch this to something else. Um, We've got a rose on the background, so I think like something a little bit flourishy. You just have to be careful with flourishes, flourishy, scripty kinds of fonts because they can be harder to read. Um, let's try Allura though. And then I do want to make this a little bigger. Now the one thing I need to be aware of is I can't make it too big because I've got a complete sentence pretty much for each of my prompts. And so I'm going to have problems with text overflowing the text box if I get too big with my points. So let's just choose 18 point here. Um, that looks like a decent size. And so now I can just delete this text here. I don't really need it. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to open the data merge manager and you're going to find that under document and then data merge manager. Down in the bottom corner here, there's a little piece of paper that says add data merge source. I'm going to click on that and I'm going to find my downloads and go to prompt demo, which is what I named my spreadsheet and open it. And I'm going to click preview with record here. You can choose to either get all records from this. So all the different prompts that we put in the lines, or you can specify a range. So this can be helpful if you want to create multiple books. Let's say you've collected a spreadsheet of a couple of hundred prompts, but you want to maybe do uh, one to 70 in your first book and then maybe 71 through 140 in your second book and the remaining one in your third book. So you could specify a range from your spreadsheet if you want. And I'm just going to uncheck merge enabled for the moment. And so now I've got my document loaded. Um, I'm going to open my fields manager. So you can find that under view and then studio and fields. With my cursor in my text box, what I want to do is I want to find that title that we gave our spreadsheet. So here prompt under the very last little section in the fields 
window, it says prompt, and you can see it's showing you the first line, describe a time when you felt loved. So with my cursor in this text box, I want to double click on this field name, which is prompt. Okay, and so that puts in, let's just zoom in a little bit, that puts in one of these um, merge field things. So those are the little things with the uh, kind of triangular brackets around it. And so that is all we need to do with our fields is just specify that this text box should have our prompts. So now I'm going to go back to data merge and click the merge enabled and generate. And it's just saying, uh, do I want to update my source? And I'm just going to say yes. And it's going to start working. And it's going to create a new document. You see over here, a new document popped up. And if I go over there, it has automatically generated. Let's get all this stuff out of the way and zoom in a little bit. It's given me a document that has all my different prompts. on the pages already done. So you can see that once you have this concept to create new prompt journals, you would go to your master pages, edit the look of your background page. So do you want to change up the lines or do you want to change up a background image um, and then update your page? You only need one page to start and then choose a spreadsheet of prompts and bring them in and press generate and you have got a notebook ready to export. So to recap, we created a document that had a master page that had our basic journal look and feel to it, our lines and our background image. And then on page one, I put a text box decided what I wanted for formatting, so I chose a font and a font size and centered everything. Then I went and made a Excel spreadsheet that had all of my prompts. The top of my column had the word prompt as the name of my field. I then imported that spreadsheet into the Data Merge Manager, which you find under Document, and then Data Merge Manager, clicked on this little button to import it, and then I went over to the Fields window, which I found under View, Studio, and Fields, clicked on my text box, and then at the very bottom of it, clicked on the word Prompt, which was the title for the column I wanted to import, and then back to Data Merge and Generate and it opened a new document and it added the different prompts to each page that it generated from that spreadsheet. So I think that's pretty awesome. And uh, there are prompts that you can get out there that have commercial rights, meaning you can use them for any project you want. And so I'm going to link to a blog post that includes some places where you can find prompts for commercial use uh, for very little money, and then you can use those to insert into your journals. So I hope you have fun with this. Thanks for watching.